America is basically a restaurant. America is a restaurant that sells equality. That's all it is. They serve equality, and some of y'all had some delicious equality. It was good. You had great service. And some of us need to speak to a manager. <laughs> You tell them black people to stand for the anthem, that's the same as walking around Applebee's telling people not to complain about their food. <laughs> how you get to dictate how somebody else complain about their situation? You may as well just walk around Applebee's. You need to be happy that you even in this Applebee's. <laughs> you know how many people outside trying to sneak in this Applebee's? We had to build a wall around this Applebee's. I'd be like, yo, man, you need to calm your ass down. Get your facts straight. First off, I was at Red Lobster minding my business. Y'all brought us to Applebee's. I don't know what we're gonna do between us and the police. This shit is getting hard. Every day, police might get called on you while you're trying to get coffee. Police might get called on you while you're trying to barbecue. Police might get called on you while you're trying to mow the yard, take a nap, sell some water. At this point, if you black, the safest thing you can do every day is just call the police on yourself. I mean, the white people gonna call anyway, so you may as well take the power back. Control the narrative. That's what I'm gonna do every day. Call the police and compliment. Say something nice about yourself. Change the perception. 911, what's your emergency? Ain't no emergency, it's just a smooth motherfucker headed to Walgreens. Just checking in. Red jacket, white pants. Don't shoot me! Call unit be advised, male black Walgreens. Respond code. I don't know. I don't know what the, what, I don't know what you do. Move too slow, you might get shot. Move too fast, you might get shot. Don't move, you wasn't obeying commands, you might get shot. I don't know, yo, at this point, like, I ain't gonna tell y'all how to dress every day so you can feel safe, but I'm gonna start wearing a cap and gown everywhere I go. <laughs> Until things cool off for a little while. You ain't never felt threatened by somebody in a cap and gown, not never. Cap and gown is like a wedding dress. You see somebody wearing it, it make you happy. It change your mood. So that's what I'm gonna do. Until we get some real police reform, I'm wearing a cap and gown every day with a, with a, fucking, with a middle school diploma in my back pocket. A middle school diploma and an engagement ring. It's gonna be the saddest story. Cause you ain't gonna sweep me under the rug. Cause this was crazy. We live in a time now where if you get shot on the wrong day, you might not even make it in the news. They'll sweep your story all the way to the back page. Damn that, I'm gonna be on the front. But if the police shot a 40 year old eighth grader, I promise you, it's gonna be a conversation about me. Y'all better ride for my ass. And another news today, police shot a 40 year old eighth grader. He survived by his three ex-wives and six children. Send a prayer up for Mr. Charles. <laughs> Pay cops more money. Money is part of the solution. It ain't the only solution, but it's part of it. Here's the thing, we love to act like all these good cops just gonna all step up and do the right thing together. Please, most people don't do the right thing for the right reason. They do the right thing for the right price. It's about the money. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of good cops out there, man, but not enough to affect change. You gotta do something to incentivize. You gotta break bread. And don't, and don't tell me you ain't got the money to pay cops more. Every time somebody get hit over the head, you gotta pay a settlement. So take the money you would have paid for a settlement and just put that in the cops' pockets. And they might care a little more. At minimum, just set up a snitch fund. Can we do that? Now, okay, don't pay every cop more, just the cops who snitch on the other cops. That's who you pay, 100,000. 100,000 per snitch. 
You got police departments paying 200, 300 million a year. You put 100,000 per se. I promise you, if you started giving cops 100,000 to snitch on other cops, they would be arresting each other at roll call. <laughs> Immediately, you wouldn't even make it out the police station in the morning. Put your hands up, Sanchez. <laughs> I saw what you did, Sanchez. I gotta get 100,000. Shit, I need 200,000. Arrest me too, Sanchez. We got to go down. Put a hundred thousand on it. It'll change everything, I promise you. Because you ain't gonna break through that thin blue line just off of morals. Real cops don't snitch on other cops. Real cops stand tall. You ever, you ever notice all that brotherhood fraternity shit? It's for jobs where you're underpaid and nobody appreciates you. So. <laughs> So it, it, it's cop and school teacher and military, it's firefighter. It's all these jobs where you do dope shit, but no one respects you. So they've tricked you into thinking that fraternity is a substitute for currency, and it ain't. Pay them, give them some money. Cause here's what happens. You start giving cops more money to snitch on each other, it's a good paying job. Anybody with a good paying job knows you snitch immediately. Ain't no brotherhood in a job that pay you a real wage. People snitch left and right. You ever notice doctors don't stick together? <laughs> doctors snitch on each other in a heartbeat. Every year in this country, somebody get the wrong leg chopped off or the doctor leave a butter knife inside you. It ain't a bunch of doctors in the emergency room talking about real doctors don't snitch on other doctors. We're still like, no, that nigga chopped off the leg 